My name is Coco. Today, I'd like to tell you about the similarities between Zhuangzi and Art of War. Commonly known as the Butterfly Dreamer, Zhuangzi actually knows a lot about making war. Let's find out. All translations from Chinese to English are mine. They may not be the same as those that you have read before. In this video, I want to point out some very important similarities between Art of War and Zhuangzi, the book. First, let's start with the concept of imperceptible action. In the chapter of planning an attack, Sun Zi focuses on securing victory without fighting. For example, he says, a commander who wins 100 victories in 100 battles is not the best of the best. The one who can force the enemy to give up the fight without any action is the best of the best. In the chapter of Grandmaster, Zhuangzi says something similar but more abstract. The Tao has signs and evidence of its existence, but no perceptible action or form. Next, the concept of imperceptible formation. In the chapter of illusion and reality, Sun Zi says, therefore, the ultimate formation of an army is imperceptible formation. The imperceptible formation is something a deeply embedded spy cannot observe, and the smart strategist of the enemy cannot plot against. To me, the definition of Tao in a grandmaster echoes this concept. I won't repeat it because it's been mentioned in the previous slide. Next, the contrast between perceptible and imperceptible formation and the finite and the infinite. In the chapter of uh, Illusion and Reality, Sun Zi says, When the enemy's formation is perceptible, while ours remain imperceptible, our forces are concentrated and the enemy's divided. When our forces are concentrated as one, while the enemy's forces are divided on 10 fronts, we will be fighting the enemy with 10 times the power. Similarly, Zhuangzi says, our lives are finite, but what is to be known is infinite. Pursuing the infinite with finite is a pursuit in vain. Next, these four uh, Chinese characters uh, stand for create weird secure victory. That's how they say think outside the box in Chinese. In the chapter of the momentum of troops, Sun Zi says in warfare, Two forces engage each other with conventional methods, but the winner secures victory with unconventional methods. Zhuangzi substantiates this idea with, a, a, with two stories in a chapter, A Carefree Adventure. That's how it goes. In the state of song, a family in a trade of uh, washing raw silk has a secret lotion. This lotion uh, protects uh, their skin in cold water. 
a wandering strategist buys uh, this formula from uh, them with uh, 100 units of gold. And I have to explain what the term wandering strategist um, means here. They are strategists that go from state to state to sell ideas of making those states stronger. Um, about um, uh, 2,400 uh, years ago in China. And the king of the state of Wu uh, appoints this wandering strategist as general. And the state of Wu fights a naval battle with the state of Yue in the winter and wins a resounding victory thanks to the formula. The wandering strategist or a general is generally generously rewarded with land. So there are two outside the box thinkers in this victory. They are the wandering strategist and the king of Wu. Since I'm on this topic, I must also mention uh, Thales of uh, Miletus. He's one of the seven sages of ancient Greece. He was an uh, uh, astronomer and a mathematician. The source is from Aristotle's Politics. There are other versions, um, but they are uh, rather uh, similar. His neighbors say that he's poor because he focuses on basic research. With his knowledge of uh, basic research, he predicts a bumper crop of olives next year and leases all olive oil presses in the region for the next year. A year later, uh, the bumper crop of olives uh, materializes. Because uh, Thales has a monopoly on olive oil presses, he makes a lot of money. Now, here's the question. Where does his money uh, for the lease come from? He may not be that poor, just relatively poor. We don't know because uh, the uh, source isn't exactly clear on how he got his money to pay for the lease of the, uh, the uh, oil press. So the, the outside of the box thinking of Thales is leasing rather than buying because he can control far more machines by leasing them. Next, these four Chinese words mean bypass solid, strike hollow. They correspond to the English phrase of finding the path of least resistance. In the chapter of illusion and reality, Sun Tzu says, the formation of water bypasses the high ground and heads for the low ground. The formation of an army bypasses the solid and strikes the hollow. And let's turn to the story of the master butcher uh, in Zhuangzi, in the chapter of nurturing the master of our body, which is the spirit. Um, the master butcher cuts beef by sliding his blade between bones with ample clearance. He can maintain the sharpness of his knife for years, whereas other butchers need a new knife every several months. So that's state of the art, uh, meat cutting. It should be noted that Sliding the blade between bones with ample clearance, or yu is a common Chinese phrase used to this day. It means doing things with ease. Next, 
the importance of following the momentum and following the course of nature. Sun Tzu says in the momentum of, of troops, the momentum of capable fighters is, is like that of a boulder rolling down a mountain of a thousand fathoms. Similarly, in the chapter of the human road, Zhuang Zi says, the reason why the tiger is of a different species than humans yet still adores its keeper is because the, keep, the keeper follows the, the tiger's nature. If the keeper is killed by the tiger, the reason is that the tiger keeper goes against the tiger's nature. The analogy of the ring. Both Zhuangzi and Sunzi like to use the analogy of the ring. For example, Sunzi says, conventional and unconventional momenta evolve from each other like a rotating ring, which has no end. How could such evolution be exhausted? Likewise, Zhuangzi says, figuring out that polarity does not exist means finding the center of Tao. This center is firmly located at the center of the ring of Tao, which meets the infinite number of points in this ring. Next, the attack of no attack and the use of uselessness. Sun Tzu says that there are some rules that should not be followed. There are some enemy forces that should not be attacked. There are some cities that should not be attacked. There are some areas that should not be claimed. There are some orders from political leaders that should not be heeded. Likewise, Zhuang Zi says, as Memphis trees are edible, therefore they are chopped. The sap of a lacquer tree is useful, thus the tree is cut. Humans all know the use of usefulness, but they don't know the use of uselessness. Next. Both Sun Tzu and Zhuang Zi love chaos. For example, Zhuang Zi says, Confusion upon confusion is how an army should appear to its enemy in a messy battle. Yet this army will not be confused in battle. Chaos upon chaos is the perfect formation that an army should assume. This quality makes this army invincible. And Please know that confusion and chaos is how the army should appear to the enemy, not to itself, and not how it really is. And Zhuang Zi tells us a story. The god of the uh, South Sea is Shu, and the god of the North Sea is Hu, and the god of the center is chaos. Shu and Hu often meet at the place of chaos, who treats them nicely. Shu and Hu plan to return the favor of uh, the hospitality of chaos. They say, every person has seven orifices to see, hear, eat, and breathe. This poor creature, however, doesn't have any. Let's use chisels on him to open up the orifices. They chisel an orifice each day, and seven days later, chaos dies. And the moral of the story is that chaos is the perfect form in war and in nature. Don't ruin it. And last but not least, binary thinking. Look at these uh, word 
pairs highlighted in, yen, in yellow from uh, Sunzi. They are moon, sun, winter, summer, far, near, steep, gentle, wide, narrow, deadly, safe. And in Zhuangzi, the word pairs are death, life, survival, demise, misery, prosperity, poverty, wealth, wisdom, stupidity. I believe uh, their inspiration comes from Yi Jing, or Book of Changes, which is a fortune-telling book. What's interesting is how the Chinese uh, do their uh, fortune-telling. They see the world as binary codes. And we want to ask, who influences whom? Many ancient works are group projects over generations. For example, Aristotle and all the works bearing his name. The same goes for most literary works in ancient China. We don't know when Sun Tzu's Art of War and Zhuangzi were written, nor how many versions of their works had existed before the ones we commonly see today. We know that Sun Tzu predates Zhuangzi by about 180 years, but we must keep an open mind to interpret their texts. Maybe the third version of one influenced the seventh version of another. We don't know. So, to recap, we no, there are some similarities between uh, Sun Tzu and Zhuangzi. For example, find and follow the path of least resistance and don't fight the enemy head on. Blend in with nature and hide in plain sight. The use of uselessness and the attack of no attack. And finally, Think outside the box. Zhuangzi is much more than the butterfly dreamer. His book is a book on power and strategy hidden in plain sight. And are you sure Taoism is the philosophy of the hippies? Well, if I can figure this out, you bet that I have uh, plans for the military standoff around Ukraine. And I think Ukraine's uh, chief of staff will want to talk to me. Likewise, in the war on drugs, my troops can wipe out the cartels overnight in any given region, most likely without a single shot fired and no physical confrontation at all and the cartels will not want to come back to my territory. If you get a chance to watch my TV show, you'll understand much more. So, see you next time. Bye.